Water, Ebony. I've been a fan of the game Ebony almost since its inception. I believe the first ever Ebony servers appeared in August of 2009, and I started playing in November of the same year on server 43. I had a lot of fun playing Ebony. Ebony is a persistent world game set in medieval times. The player is a lord or lady who starts with one castle with nothing in it. The player slowly builds up his or her castle. Resource fields can be constructed to produce iron, wood, stone, or food. Also in the city, different structures can be built to perform different functions. Chances are, if you're watching this video, then you have some familiarity with Ebony, so I won't spend too long on a description. It takes about three weeks to a month of building to get a decent account set up and start raising an army. For additional resources, a player constructs NPC cities surrounded, surrounding his own city to farm for resources. A specific type and amount of troops can be sent out to farm these structures with no losses. Players in Ebony form into alliances of up to 99 players. It's common also for Ebony players to have multiple accounts or alts to support their main account. Ebony is a free game and everything in the game can be accomplished without spending money. However, to be competitive and to save time, it behooves a player to fork out a little cash to, spend, to speed things along. Ebony is a long-term game where things are measured mainly uh, in terms of days, not minutes. Some of the longer researches required to progress take days to accomplish. After a couple of years of Ebony existing, bots appeared. Bots in this case are programs which assist the player to accomplish various tasks. For example, farming level 5 NPCs to support an army can be a monotonous task. Performing this manually requires sending troops to hit a list of many cities. Before there were bots, I used to carry around a piece of graph paper with the coordinates of my farming cities written down. After a long period of time, I was able to memorize over 30 NPC locations. Bots made these boring but necessary tasks automated and made the game more fun. The developers resisted bots at first, at least publicly, but in the end allowed them to coexist with the game. To find out the reason for this, one only has to look at Ebony's business model. Ebony makes its money from the hardcore players who are willing to pay money for speedups and other in-game perks. Thousands can play for free because of the few quote-unquote coiners who pay for the game. For a while the term coiners was a dirty word. However, Alliance hosts and others soon realize it's good to have a few coiners around because they tend to be the stronger players. It also turns out that players who were first to get the bots were those same hardcore players who were spending their money on the game. So to block the bots meant the devs were blocking their income flow. And that wasn't going to happen. So devs at least acted for a while like they were blocking the bots, but they really weren't. They inserted CAPTCHA plugins on many servers which were supposed to block the bots. Bot programmers quickly determined, uh, determined methods to defeat these, however. I remember when CAPTCHA programs first came on Ebony servers and there was actually, you actually had to pay money for the plugin that would solve the CAPTCHA. So that was just another source of income for somebody. At one point I stopped playing Ebony for a very long time. I came back to it a few months ago to just check in. Unfortunately the evolution of the game has gotten us to a point where a few players with strong computer skills are running advanced scripts to a create accounts for sale. Checking out World Chat one sees constant advertisements for accounts for sale. Ebony has always been very exciting in the first month or two of gameplay. It is very immersive and it is a real thrill to race other players to set up cities. One big downside of the bots however is that they not only help with rote tasks, they also will defend players when they're not online. The bots will do more complex tasks like attacking people um, and they will defend you down to the point where they will actually truce your account if it's getting uh, close to the point where you're going to lose a city. So if you, for example, attack somebody with a bot, the most you can do uh, a lot of the time is just um, get it so that they truce their city and eventually um, you can wait 12 hours and they're not allowed to truce again for a while 
And if you're a really skilled player, you can defeat the bots, but it takes a ton of effort, and it's just really not that fun after a while. There was a time when, when to defend oneself, one had to either be constantly monitoring a computer 24 hours a day, or players had to take shifts. Alliance members would share password info for all accounts in an alliance. Alliance members uh, would share their keys, so if any member of an alliance got attacked, any other member could jump on and defend them. With the advent of bots, however, it's extremely easy to defend an account, and even a good player has a difficult time attacking a mediocre player running a good computer program. The biggest problem with Ebony has never changed, bots or no bots, and that is that there's no sort of satisfying endgame to Ebony. Servers slowly just become less and less active, until there are only a handful of players on a server. Also, with multiple accounts, a few players can control literally tens or hundreds of accounts, and it's close to impossible to unseat a player like this. I came back to Ebony about a month ago after a long hiatus. I can't deny that I enjoyed setting up accounts. Ebony has a bit of a learning curve, and it was fun to go through the process once again that was taught to me years ago by players. I almost feel like a Shaolin in possession of secret knowledge. However, a month into the game, all my secret knowledge and tricks can be equaled by someone signing on and buying an account very similar to mine for only $30. I spent hours and hours, not only to mention, I spent hours and hours on my account, not to mention over $100 on speedups. Well, someone can come online and buy multiple accounts like mine from several sellers for only $30 each. Now, I get that people are trying to carve out niches to make money, and I get it. You know, people are trying to make money. And, you know, they exploit a niche, and they make money off of it. Now, is it the person who's making money's fault? Is it the game developer's fault? It doesn't really matter whose fault it is. What matters is that the game is less and less fun because of it. I've enjoyed meeting new people in my alliance. I enjoy the social aspects of talking to people in chat. As far as gameplay, it's just not that much fun to me anymore. I don't see much point in putting up Let's Plays to teach people how to play this game because I really don't see much future for it. There are too many other cool games out there to spend time and money on. Ebony was a great thing for me in its glory days. It was immersive and lots of fun. At this point, however, it just occupies too many hours and some money without much of a satisfying ending. I'll share one tip of prestige farming before I end this. Players and alliances are ranked by a metric called prestige. It's really an irrelevant metric other than it gives a vague measure of a player's progress in the game. It can be easily manipulated, however. It used to be that a player could drop prestige just by quitting an alliance. That's since been done away with. However, to prestige farm, or to grow one's prestige on purpose, here's a little tip. The prestige of any single action is divided by the total number of town hall levels in all of a player's cities. Thus, if a player has two cities with two level 10 town halls, then any prestige action is divided by 20. So to grow prestige faster than players around you, just keep those town hall levels as low as possible. Don't raise town halls unless or until completely necessary. You know, I hate to have a dreary, uh, you know, conclusion to this little ebony um, uh, view, but I want to be realistic. Um, you know, I wasted a lot of time playing ebony back in the day, and you know, time is valuable in life, and there's so many great new games out there. Um, so I, if you're considering playing Ebony, I, I might consider doing something else because there's other things out there that are more fun. There, you know, graphics has come so far since the advent of Ebony. Even games where you're building up resources and fighting uh, have come a long way since 2009. And so if you're a hardcore Ebony player, I would definitely recommend you you know, don't stop playing Ebony necessarily, but check out what else is out there. There's some great, great new games out there. Um, anyways, I will see you in the game. Thanks for watching.
for those players who still do play Ebony, um, I will be continuing to give some tips. So uh, subscribe and come back and see what else I've got for you soon. Thanks for watching.